For cancers like prostate or lung, why would you choose SBRT and not regular radiations? So we need to understand lung and prostate first before we go into those tumors. Lung and prostate, they are extremely mobile organs when it comes to movement along with breathing. And that is where we tend to lose out on follow-ups of those patients. So to ensure that the patient is having the compliant treatment, the compliant follow-up visits, the compliant checkups, it is of paramount importance that the family steps in and says that, hey, this is not only your struggle, it is our struggle as well. Hello and welcome to today's episode. Today we are honored to have Dr. Anupam Datta, Senior Consultant Radiation Oncologist from NCRI Kolkata. Dr. Datta specializes in high precision radiation techniques. So without any further delay, let's start with the first question. So Dr. Datta, what are the modern radiation techniques that you use in your department? So in our department, we have been using advanced cutting edge radiation techniques like IMRT, which is Intensity Modulated Radiotherapy, VMAT, Volumetric Arc Therapy, and Stereotactic Body Radiotherapy or SBRT. We have been using these techniques for the last five years and we have an experience of around roughly 6,500 to 7,000 patients on our machine. When treating cancers like breast or lung cancers, how do chemotherapy and radiation work? So, they work synergistically. Chemotherapy and radiation therapy are given maintaining a particular sequence. Like in breast cancer, radiation therapy is given after completion of surgery and after completion of all the chemotherapy cycles. While at the same time, in cancers like rectal cancers, radiation therapy is given concurrently with chemotherapy tablets. Sometimes we give, without surgery also, we give definitive chemo radiotherapy in which chemotherapy is combined concurrently with radiation therapy. So if we talk about how they are sequenced, they can be either sequenced chemo before radiotherapy or radiotherapy along with chemotherapy or both after surgery together. So Dr. Datta, every cancer patients are different. So how do you decide the best treatment plan for your patients? So we usually decide our treatment plans in our MDTs, which is the multidisciplinary tumor boards wherein based on patient to patient we customize the treatment as per the protocols that are available we follow international guidelines and based on that based on a patient's stage of presentation of cancer patient's age patient's performance status we decide as to which modality of therapy should be given further whether surgery would be given for first or radiation or chemotherapy should be given first followed by surgery. So it all depends upon a patient's stage of presentation in a tumor board setting. Okay, so could you please explain in simple terms what is SBRT? So SBRT as I have already told you it stands for stereotactic body radiotherapy wherein stereotactic means it's a very very precise form of treatment delivery involving very strict immobilization techniques and after that the radiation therapy that will be delivered to the patient will have the precision of a surgical knife which means that even for small tumors and extremely mobile tumors radiation therapy can be given with extreme high precision thereby avoiding doses to the critical structures nearby as a result of this particular therapy you have maximum doses to the tumor and minimum doses to the surrounding normal tissue and the patient comes out with minimal to minimal side effects with maximal tumor control. For cancers like prostate or lung, why would you choose SBRT and not regular radiations? So we need to understand lung and prostate first before we go into those tumors. Lung and prostate, they are extremely mobile organs when it comes to movement along with breathing. When a human being breathes, the lung inflates and deflates with the respiration. As a result of this, the tumor that is present in the lung also moves along with the lung 
with inspiration and expiration. The same thing happens with the prostate. When we breathe in, the prostate volume goes down and when we breathe out, the prostate volume goes up. As a result of this, if we are using any other technique other than stereotactic body radiotherapy or SBRT, what happens is there is a high chance of missing the tumors. We call that a geographic miss. We don't want to miss those tumors during our radiation therapies. We want to get those tumors maximum dose even when they are moving. So SBRT ensures that we are taking care of the movement of the tumors while we are treating. So this is why any mobile tumor, be it lung, be it prostate, be it liver, we would prefer to have SBRT compared to other techniques. All right. People are really worried about the side effects of cancer. So uh, what are the common side effects of radiation or chemotherapies? So uh, if we talk about the common side effects of radiotherapy, usually radiation therapy side effects, they are very, very local side effects, which means that the area that we are irradiating, only we will get to see the side effects in those areas. Most commonly we have skin dermatitis due to radiation therapy wherein the skin becomes brownish to reddish to blackish towards the end of radiotherapy then when we treat the lung tumors patients do develop radiation pneumonitis after radiation therapy after quite a long time after radiotherapy sometimes due to doses that go into the heart they have pericarditis when we are treating pel pelvic malignancies there is radiation into the bowel which is why sometimes patients complain of diarrhea patients complain of dysentery and of course when we treat the head and neck cancers patients always end up with, dif with difficulty in uh, swallowing so it depends upon the site we are irradiating and based on the no structures that are getting radiation the side effects manifest accordingly how does radiation therapy help with the gynecological patients see uh, today's era we have a very very high incidence of gynecological malignancies especially cervical cancers now cervical cancers is a disease of the rural population so talking about a family support we need to understand that a cancer is a battle it's not that a patient has cancer and his all lost in life so a cancer treatment might go from as low as two months to a year or a year and a half so the family should step in there not only in terms of finances but most importantly in terms of a moral backup the family should always be there to help the patient get maximum moral boost because patients we have seen in our daily practice that 99% of patients they slip into depression during their entire treatment they would not like to communicate with others they don't mix socially and that is where problems start happening and that is where we tend to lose out on follow-ups of those patients so to ensure that the patient is having the compliant treatment the compliant follow-up visits the compliant checkups it is of paramount importance that the family steps in and says that hey this is not only your struggle it is our struggle as well and we are there with you so when it comes to family it is all about a moral support and once the patient has a moral support then i can say that half the battle is won over there thank you dr datta for sharing with us your precious time take care stay informed